Oh, attempt to communicate. Oh. Grandpa? Okay, at, we know that at week four, they usually terminate the thing. I wonder if the game's gonna give us an option to terminate it. The time I have to spend compiling an evaluation of Adrian is almost up, and I still can't say what to make of her changes in mood. It is of course the case that children of Adrian's age are nowhere near finished learning and growing. I may have simply be happy with Adrian was able to improve her attitude. However, something in the odd and occasionally grotesque story she continues to bring up to me still strike me as meaningful. How's your week been, Adrian? Well, Grandpa's almost ready, huh? Almost finished, well, sort of. Ah, uh, he's almost as big as his shell now. He has a face and he can talk pretty well and almost has legs. I see. As before, I put down the story she told me as best I could. Once again, Adrian told me about growing her grandpa. Okay. Let's go to Grandpa first. Three foods, teach Grandpa. Go to Grandpa. Oh. Observe. You examine Grandpa, noting its movements, respiration, and general mood. Grandpa seems fatigued and almost anemic. Some of its spines appear brittle. Perhaps it would be more cooperative if fed an iron-rich meal like meat. No response. Okay. Grandpa's certainly... Certainly grown into a big, strong boy. Big old bump, bumbling boy. I'm just so curious where this is going to lead us to. shelly -o. What are you watching here? I wish I could tell you. It's some weird stuff going on about growing this child's grandfather via this mimic-type alien thing on this planet. It's very interesting. The space is all clean. It will not be dirty for the next week. It's just all clean. It will not be dirty for the next week. Okay. All right. This area is clean. Clear. Kitchen corner. What, got, what kind of food do we have for Grandpa this week? Yummy and an, an edible apple. That's good. And uh, in the lower fridge, we have jackfruit. It does have a David Lynch type of vibe, doesn't it? It's pretty cool. I love, like, obscure stuff like this. Okay, I can either use the apple or the potato to hide an unappealing item. I wonder if we're going to find something we can feed Grandpa to check his stomach contents this week. All right. Let us... Oh, we can't go here yet. Let's examine. Trash. Trash pile. Okay. Was there anything in here? Oh. Bar of soap. This isn't really food. Grandpa might eat it, however. Okay, so we're gonna have to slip a bar of soap into Grandpa's food this week. Somebody, Shell, somebody was saying in the comment section to the Game Grumps video about this, this is where I learned about this game, that there was a, a movie that reminds them of this, and it was Grandmother, and it's David Lynch. Good eye. I need to watch that. I've never seen that. You peer into the small opening created by your incision. However, you barely hear near silence. Okay. Is there more meat in here? Okay. No, no, no meat. Okay. Still nothing here. Okay. The cabinet. So yeah, we come here every week and we look and clean up trash and we find new stuff to interact with Grandpa. It's kind of like a Tamagotchi. <laughs> it's kind of we're growing a Tamagotchi. Someone said Tamagotchi horror. Meaning. New linguistic card, okay. Top drawer. I wonder if we'll be able to make another totem this week, but we haven't found anything to make a totem. Not yet, at least. Base is clean, okay. Oh, a new bulbous growth. 
Now possible to take a look inside. However, you just barely hear the near silence. Something like, okay. I love that. I love when we're throwing away these little meats. Like chicken, they kind of look like raw chicken uh, wings, right? Little tiny chicken wings that are raw, just left out. It's the vibe I get. Oh, hey, look, another remnant. Cute. Gonna guess. See, what, give me that, though. I want that. Okay. The eyes are wings. Yeah, it's pretty gross. Salmon. We already did the painting before. Let's do the trash pile. Ooh, is that bread? That's a bread. That's for sure a bread. Flat bread. It looks edible. Grandma Pub might like this. Okay. Trash pile. Uh, examine. Is that a... Oh, that's a mushroom. Yummy. Mmm, yum yum. Grandpa is an NPC streamer. Okay. Symbol. New word to teach. And mushroom. Yum. Okay. Vagabond dinner. Erm, this is just girl dinner. Okay, let's... Put all of this... In here. I wonder if we're gonna get another remnant. Nope. Okay. Back out. Okay, so... I know now, because we did we did everything here we can. We need to go into Grandpa's uh, kitchen. We need to go to the kitchen. Uh, and we need to prepare an apple and the bar of soap. The soap is concealed in soft apple flesh. You know, who's going to know the difference? You, know, you take a bite of a soap, you take a bite of an apple, it's all the same, right? That should be just fine. Okay, that's everything. Now let's go back to Grandpa and feed him. Grandpa, I have a yummy soap for you. Mmm, yummy. Grandpa is unable to detect the unappealing item in the food. Yum. Although quickly consumed, the meal seemed to be causing some indigestion. And with a sudden lurch, Grandpa empties its stomach on the floor. The contents are deposited into a pool. Okay, Grandpa, you did very good. You deserve an anthropoid. Here you go, Grandpa. Mmm, do you want the anthropoid? There you go, Grandpa. The meal appears to have been particularly well received. Your offering of flesh stirs something within Grandpa. From within the folds of its body, a wide proboscis like appendage begins to emerge. And maybe we're taking a look at this after feeding. Okay. I can only feed it one arthropod, huh? Grandpa's desire for flesh has been sated. It may be aroused very soon again. Okay. I'll give you a flat bread. Mmm, do you like yummy bread? Do you like bread? Mmm, yummy bread. Yummy. Grandpa finds it palatable. Grandpa liked the bread. Let's stop there real quick. Grandpa slides silently back to the corner. Let's see. Oh, let's examine the proboscis. You motion to Grandpa to approach and point to the thin protrusion. Amble's closer to the bars. Oh, there's the proboscis again. A minuscule need to extend for the tips. There appears to be one more thing for you must give, only for the sake of propriety. No, we don't need to do that right now. We'll do that after. Go to Grandpa. Examine stomach contents. A flashlight! This is big for us. Hold on. Ew. Hey, Cromer. Okay. We now have access to the waste bin and the bookshelf. A new totemic symbol. Classic of alchemy. Discourse on subordination of hidden beings. 
right now. On three, venture with the three paternity dealing with devils seen or unseen. Three splendors and terrors of God's creations inhabit three world of both seen and unseen, and must grapple with lion. This be full one, not approach being of mind or ether without forbidden knowledge or for. There are beings with no form, hiding between towering columns of air and only appearing by slipping into the harder mind of evil and unclean men. But still, there are more beings with straddle three realms between the realm between the seen and the unseen creatures feeling through the gap. will so a magician must be perfectly clear and unerring in intent and ritual granted by God kind of like how to conduct a magic on the nourishing of devils of a particular type certain devils of particular nature are nourished by the element of fire others by attention and prayer given to their idols still others by stranger and more obscure means by God's grace the requirements of for nourishing a devil as part of a contract only requires a token of these givings that is a symbol if a devil hungers after flesh and would strip a man to his bones in its devouring, the devil's hunger in nature, which thirsts for flesh, can be held in abeyance in the ritual act of giving blood only a few drops. Oh, hold on. This is telling us what to do. If a devil hungers after flesh and would strip a man to his bones in its devouring, the devil's hunger in nature, which thirsts for flesh, can be held in abeyance in the ritual act of giving blood in only a few drops. Okay, so that's why we give him blood. We're sating him. However, the contract must be completed in full, for if it, if the magician errs and does not provide the devil instruction and guidance, the devil, once abjured to do no harm upon the magician, will return to its devouring nature. Whoa. That's cool. Okay, we have the code for this. So this is why we have to make sure every time we feed meat to grandpa that we give grandpa uh, blood because that satiates it. We need to go to the study corner, uh, look over documents. One of these documents has uh, the paper we need. Or the code, I should say. It's not the magic, but orientation. No, like any other piece of purpose and substance. It's really fascinating what they're doing with the storytelling in this game. Okay. It was like after the orientation. No, termination procedure. Here we go. Three, two, three, two, four, five. Got it. Three, two, three, two, four, five. The lid unlocks, and with some effort, you move the heavy lid off of the bin. Oh, shit. This is the biohazard bin. A photo of your father as a young man. The recognition of this face kicks off a cadence of emotion and meaning deep within your psyche. I thought we were going to grab more pieces of him from in here. Or something along the lines of that. That's a man. I look like the mother figure, but, you know, maybe that's... Maybe, you know, it's from the 80s. He had long hair. Tangible symbol of attention and desire. Okay, so... I think we're going towards some form of ending, and I don't know what we're figuring out here, but we'll see. It looks like a man. I don't know. It looks ambiguous. Uh, go to the kitchen corner. Oh, go to the study corner one more time. I didn't uh, examine educational posters. Okay, this is fine. Nothing new for this device. Okay. Go to Grandpa. Uh, examine. No, let's continue to feed Grandpa, and then we can give the blood. Uh, potato. Lettuce. Here's some lettuce, Grandpa. Do you like lettuce? Mmm, yummy lettuce. Mmm. Meal appears to have been sufficient. 
I can't give it another arthropoid. It doesn't want it. Grandpa's desire for flesh has been sated, but may be aroused again very soon. Okay, so maybe I gotta do something for that. But jackfruit. Do you like jackfruit, Grandpa? Mmm, look at this jackfruit. Grandpa is too full to consume such a mediocre meal. Perhaps we had something more exciting. Mushrooms are exciting. Do you like mushrooms, Grandpa? Grandpa, do you like mushrooms? Mushrooms. Grandpa's too full to consume. Perhaps you had something more exciting. Blood. Yeah, we gotta do the blood thing in a second, I think. Because I don't think it's gonna take anything right now. Is enticed with the smells. Rubbing it through your olfactory bulbs. Okay, it's fine. Grandpa's done. Step away from the window. Grandpa grunts at appreciation and locomotes towards its favorite corner. Okay, go to Grandpa. Hey, Grandpa, here's a. Have only a little. Just a little bit, Grandpa. Grandpa, I appreciate your blood offering. It will receive a symbol of totem from you now, only though only one per offering. As the blood-fed proboscis retracts back into the folds of fabric, you step away from the bars. Go to Grandpa. Offer the father doll. You approach the bars and hold out the father symbol you created. Grandpa's spines quickly reach out and envelop the doll before drawing back. Constructing and then offering your father's image to Grandpa, symbolically stated by blood, instills you in a concrete sense of completion. Grandpa gives a soft, affirming grunt as it senses deep within your mind the ritual transformation of your desire. Although Grandpa must receive both a mother and father totem before the fulfillment of your wish is assured. Knowledge you recently acquired has given you access to a new conversation topic with Grandpa. Completed contract. Let's teach Grandpa these words. And then we can do the speaking to Grandpa, because I think we're going to get some lore. Something tells me Adrian's not going to appear at school. What if Adrian's already not... Because the doctor keeps saying Adrian's changing every week and growing, right? Being more confident. Maybe Adrian is already one of these things. Like the first time she went down there and touched the thing, she turned into this, maybe, you know? I don't know. But they seem to be in, in intimating that she's changed a lot from the first session, which, I don't know, maybe she's just growing? They just say it every time. Mending. Okay. Having completed a lesson, you take a look back at the vocabulary module. Uh, we further delve into abstractions with witchers, partially or perhaps for the most part for the purpose of determining the origin of its recollections that precede its death. Dr. Hart began to theorize that in the process of the death and structure of whiskers, it's compressed back into the morphalactic nucleus and then later, upon reestablishing the nerve netting that is laced to its spines, is slowly reassembled and redeployed as needed. I do not think this is the case. I can plainly see that for growth cycles in which Whiskers is not receiving our pronunciation and vocabulary lessons, that its capacity general for comprehending its environment is greatly diminished. And in the simulated conversations we carry out, Whiskers struggles greatly or else does not participate. Struggles greatly or doesn't participate. In any case, we will press on with our lessons and heed Dr. Hart's condition, caution regarding terminating the growth cycle before Whiskers allotted growth time passes. If it appears to be becoming just too little to competent to become an appearing human. Okay. I don't know, that kind of reminds me of exactly what they said she was doing in school, right? Okay. Go to Grandpa. Teach Gramps. Symbol. Okay. This is weird. This game has created a very unsettling atmosphere for me, which is... I love it. It's very atmospheric. Let's see if it says it. Oh, it said it. Having completed the lesson, you take a look back at the vocabulary module. Metacognition and thought. General pronunciation and confidence. There is nothing. No there appears to be nothing written here. Or if it was, it was thoroughly erased. Okay. All right, now we can have a conversation with Grandpa. Let's attempt to communicate. Grandpa accedes to your request. It approaches the bars and begins to unknit its skin. The inner Grandpa, though not still fully formed, is revealed. It may be fruitful to speak with it if it can respond. Oh! Oh, it's becoming more and more human-like. Ask about Wish. Oh my god, it looks like a Grandpa! Oh! oh inner Papa. Grandpa loudly clears his throat before gently responding in a lucid and well-projected voice. Ah, you're asking me about your wish. 
When you wished for me to come back, that's when I knew I would. Your desperation was strong and your wish for your parents well. If you give me what I want, I'll give you what you want. You know I love you. I am for you whatever you want, and I love you just as much as you can love me. But desperation and love is not enough. People deep down know they can't get what they wish for without some transformation. There is something that sits at the root of everyone's soul that understands the separation between them and eternity. You may desire something, but you know you will not get it without some movement on your part. So it is not enough to just wish, which you may, which you know will not work. You must wish and a little more to transform your intention into something that might fructify or for desire to become reality. Wow. Man's is spitting lectures out now. Grandpa Shell. Grandpa loudly clears. It looks like he's wearing clothes, too. Ah, you're asking me about my shell. Oh, well, you see, I like to have something to grow in, something shaped like a person. It just helps to have something surrounding me when I don't have skin. My whiskers do the growing. My whiskers? Yes, you know, the hairy little things. I am a part of it, and it is a part of me. However, my whiskers are what heard you wishing for me to come back. And so they went to work in the shell you provided. The shell also helps you envision me as what you desire. You have such a nice imagination. If I weren't, if it, if I weren't in my shell, you'd have whiskers exposed and knitting together my face. That might interrupt the feedback loop of my reading your desires. Oh, so like seeing the face be constructed would just kind of gross her out. And then acting upon the desires I have read, and then once again reading your reaction, would, we wouldn't want that intervened, interfered with. The material of the doll you put down is a good fit. So basically he's saying that as it was trying to form the grandfather, you might form some weird thoughts of your grandfather by seeing your grandfather in that state and therefore ruin the process. Such a weird concept. Action, Grandpa said. This is not enough action. It's not the most comfortable, but it's quite flexible, and thankfully my shell was able to adjust nicely to my growth. The way the arms wiggle. Biohazard bin. Grandpa loudly. Ah, you're asking about the medical waste bin. I believe it's locked up. I heard them punch into code many times as they placed part of my burnt up, dying self into the bin. They often forgot what the code was and had to go check on the wall where they were always typing sheets up of paper information. So much so that the new papers would cover the old. What do you think you would do and find in there? So he's telling us if you haven't found that yet. Well, perhaps something they did throw trash inside from time to time. Bits of paper and so forth. I remember seeing a man who looked quite like me. His daughter had given him a photo of her new boyfriend. He threw it in the bin? He threw it into the bin in disgust and joked with one of his colleagues. It may still be in there. That's what we grabbed. About language. Grandpa loudly clears his throat before gently responding in a lucid world of it. Ah, you're asking about language. Well, the more you taught me, the more I was able to learn myself by hearing what you are thinking and saying. A week ago, I could speak a little bit, but I was less of what you imagined me to be and not quite the talker I am at the moment. Part of what I am saying is, of course, made up of what you expect me to say. I think I am very comfortable being open and honest with you because I am your grandpa and I love you, and certainly that makes up part of what I am. That's interesting. Part of what I am saying is, of course, made up of what you would expect me to say. However, there's a part of me deeper down, the thing that created me, maybe, that undying nucleus. It is answering for me as well, and it's unaffected by whoever might shape what I become with their thoughts. So there's two distinctive beings in them now, essentially, the one we create and its initial and original self. Hey, Sudoku. Ask about little friends. Ah, you're asking about my little friends. Well, yes, they come from me. They grow around me in pockets of flesh and photo protoplasm. Think of them like dreams, maybe. Eh, I'll explain. Have you ever heard of, had a dream? Have you ever had a, a dream where you, when you, Grandpa, I think you've been watching too much YouTube. Have you ever had a dream that was sort of like a bunch of people, places, and events you experienced all mixed together and jumbled up? It's a sorting through and disposing of the refuse of the mind. My little friends are like that, refuse. And in ridding myself of them, I am casting off the excess material I did not use in developing life forms. Anyone who comes close to me, well, they are my eyes, my nose, my skin. Their thoughts become mine and shape what I make. However, when I was alone for so long, I didn't have a lot of people near me. What, are you, what you are thinking and expecting of me is shaping what I'm saying, how I'm saying it. Do you understand? And so, because I did not have enough input from my surroundings in order to put the material to use, the materials fall off my body, crawl away, and then usually die. I'm able to make the most of my material when someone is looking right at me, projecting who I will be, like you are right now. 
What you are thinking and expecting of me is shaping what I'm saying, how I'm saying it. Do you understand? Creepy. We're growing our grandpa, Saduka. Ask about the proboscis. Oh, you're asking me about my proboscis. It is just a little tube I keep to help me feed on blood. You could say it is my real mouth, but it's not really a mouth. It appeared because you fed me flesh. One of those little friends you found, I think. You feeding me flesh was a symbol, a proposition, if you will, that you wanted to hold up your end of the bargain with regards to your wish. If someone is willing to hold up their end of the bargain and let me feed on them with my proboscis, then they can move on to the next step of the agreement, providing me symbolic instructions. I hope that helps clean things up. Oh, you have another question. Do I like the blood? Well, my whiskers, I believe they like the blood. And the flesh. It's strange. They are me, and yet they are now me. Not me. I am bound to them. They control me, and technically, yes, they did make me, however. You were the one who really grew me. In some ways, those whiskers, they are me, or a part of myself, or I am a part of it. That part is much more animal-like. Whatever might happen, know that I will always love you, and because it controls me, I might not be able to act how I would like, even if I do love you. I might eat you. Who's to say? Ask about completed contract. We just unlocked that. Thank you so much for completing the contract. I'll definitely help you out with your parents. Just give me a little time and I'll be ready to act. I think you'll be very happy. Your grandpa's very happy too. You did it all by yourself, you know. I couldn't have helped you if I tried. I would have really not have liked to. Well, I did not want you to not complete the contract. I would have hated that. But do you understand why I would hate that? Would have, have had to? Maybe you don't. So much of your lives are made up, and yet what comes to pass was always once a fiction. You doubt yourself and your plans before they are even begun, and you believe what is in front of you as if the essence of things was not something you put there long ago. Too much doubt can suffocate even the surest thing. Only with patience and growth and nurturing does something become what it will be. As soon you shall see. Wow. We got a lot there. Um, let me see if after I gave blood, Grandpa will take another arthropoid. I don't think so. I don't know if I should give him this because we already completed the contract. Mistakes might have been made. The meal appears to have been particularly well received. You're offering a flush or something within the proboscis. Okay, we have to do that. We have to feed it again. It may be worth taking a look after the feeding. I think we need to feed it all the remnants because I think it gets parts of itself that might give us an ending we want. I think there's multiple endings to this. Okay. Before we end the week, we absolutely have to. Uh, every time Grandpa feeds on flesh, we have to feed blood, or else it will just become. Something else. There it is. I think. I don't know. I'm taking guesses here. Grandpa's been appreciated your offering. We'll receive a similar totem from me now, the only one per offering. As the blood fed proposes to retract back in the folds, you step away from the bars. Okay. We have nothing else to offer Grandpa right now. Uh, we fed Grandpa. We taught Grandpa. We communicated. Observe. Content and ready to cooperate. Okay. Grandpa's accepting totems. Let's step back out real quick. I don't think there's anything else totem... Oh, shit. Clicked out. Totem-wise, we can do for Grandpa. Because we cleared everything here. Uh, perhaps I should have saved that for next week, and I made a mistake by feeding it now. Is my worry. But I think we did the two totems the game so far has kind of asked us. How am I finding the game? I think this is awesome. I know this might not be everybody's cup of tea, but it's definitely something I really enjoy. C good lore allows me to theory craft. So it's collective consciousness. Yeah, it's like co a collective consciousness, but it's forms based off your interpretation. It's so fascinating. It's such a fun concept. Okay. We'll save. Lock ourselves into our progress. As I said, I think we've done everything we can. All right. Exit week. Yeah. We 
weekly summary. Never made it to week five before. They always terminate at week four, but there was no option that I saw for us to, like, do a termination. I met with Adrian one oh final time in order to see if I could not reach some sort of resolution regarding her emotional trouble. In these past few weeks, according to the reports of her teachers and peers, she has shown a remarkable transformation in conduct. You see how they keep saying things like transformation? She's so different. I, I cannot help but feel there's something there. I would also add my voice to this consensus. It seems as if our time together much has changed for the better. I'm not suggesting our meetings with the sole source of her sea change. I think something has happened in her home life that has reoriented Adrian completely. She seems to suggest as much, at least in her usual esoteric way when we last spoke. Something tells me something may have changed with Grandpa. Yeah, yeah, well, something did change. I'll write down her words verbatim here. I went down the stairs like I always did, but I sort I went down the stairs like I always did, but I sort of felt like something was different. My parents weren't arguing, and I felt something had changed with Grandpa, too. There was a weird noise, but I wasn't afraid. Oh, boy. The usual words and stuff that were here are not here anymore. And we can only go to the door. What are we hearing? What is this? What have we done? No. grew a mother and father for her. I, I think Grandpa had to leave, but before he left, he made my parents nice. He reached inside and changed them. That was my wish. Maybe even what I was growing wasn't really my Grandpa. Grandpa left what I was growing behind. Oh. He's gone now. He, he moved quickly out to I don't know where, but I'll always love him. I dismissed Adrian soon after, letting her know it was a pleasure getting to know her. Despite my apprehensiveness about the speed of the turnaround she has made, I cannot see any reason why Adrian should be considered for further evaluation. And as a counselor for Adrian, let it be known that I believe she is of sound mental and emotional health. I am pleased to see things turn out this way, and if I, make an, make, if I may make a brief addendum. By happenstance, Miss Richardson bumped into the Hart family the other day while running an errand. She told me the parents were a little odd, but very pleasant and quite clearly they adored their child. And that she had never seen Adrian happier. Did we get a good ending? There are two endings in Growing My Grandpa. You got the fulfilled contract ending. Oh my god. Uh oh. Got the good ending. To skip credits and acknowledgements and return to the main menu, hold down the right mouse button. Continue. I don't think I can change anything. Because I think we did everything right, so I can't do things differently. I think it was luck. I mean, I just kind of click everything I see in-game. Wow. Okay. That was growing our grandpa. Growing my grandpa? That was a $5 game. Absolutely worth it. I love that experience. It's like about two hours of gameplay. But it was just so fun to think about. I, could, I even think a game like that could be even further fleshed out and, and developed. Because that is such a cool concept. I love what they did with that. Let's, I am curious though, because sometimes you get more information. Let's, uh... Let's see, maybe this is it. Tempted by knowledge, I gave Grandpa Flesh knew something bad would happen. What a fool I was. 
Let's see. This is Jangle Gaming. I'll check it out. Week five. Oh, she's not there. Who could that be? Come in. Ah, Adrian, good to see you. Aren't you a little early? No matter. I suppose I have time now. How have you been? How's your grandpa doing? That's why I wanted to talk to you. Something happened. Oh, what happened? Nothing bad, I hope. No, nothing bad. It's just different, I think. Maybe even good. Well, I'll tell you. Last night, something woke me up. There was this noise at first. It was like it came in from the walls. I could hear it from my bedroom, but there was something else. Something calling. I could hear it just barely. I was afraid somehow Grandpa hurt himself. I had to go find out. Oh, no. I went downstairs in the vent where I found Grandpa grew. It was open, so we, I figured that would happen. Do you remember how I told you about the vent from the ceiling behind the bars? I was thinking he climbed up into it. He'd gotten so big he could have done that. Maybe he'd gotten trapped somehow in the vent. I had to go see. Oh, we gotta click in the vent? I got inside. I heard calling again, more clearly this time. Grandpa was definitely in the vent somewhere. I could feel him hearing my thoughts. I got that weird feeling, a sense in the air. I had to go forward. Oh, that's terrifying. Hey, yo, no. Nah. As I moved in closer, the vent had stuff in it. A kind of slimy, hairy stuff Grandpa would leave around a lot. He was definitely close. Something was there at the end. Oh, it's got a mouth. But it wasn't Grandpa. It looked maybe like he had made it, though. It was slumped in the corner. It had a weird mouth, and it had lungs on the outside and drew just enough air to call out. And then it just stopped. Stopped breathing. And then something was hanging over me. Oh, no. And then I woke up in my bed. In your bed, Adrian, it sounds like it was just a, quite a dreadful dream. Are you all right, by the way? Your face is twitching, like you're about to have a violent sneeze. Oh, why is her face... I'm fine, it's just Grandpa, you see. It took me a little while to figure out, but what? Later, when I was brushing my teeth, I saw one of Grandpa's whiskers poking out, just out of the space under my eye. And I started to remember how in the vent he hid himself inside of me. It was so fast I could barely remember, but soon I started to feel him sliding around in my head. Behind my forehead and behind my eyes and nose, it doesn't hurt at all, it's just ticklish. I'm glad I can be with him. Oh, I feel him now. I think he wants me to meet you. Part of him is moving down my arm. No. I'm starting to get worried, Adrian. You really should not be twitching like this. I should walk you out of the nurse's office. Come on, let's go. You should really meet him. I've told you so much about him. What are you doing, Adrian? You're starting to look very ill. Please just wait. Just stay still. He's gathering. He's waiting at my figure. Oh, no. Why do you look like that? You, d you don't have to be afraid. Look. That's horrifying. So we got the good end, which didn't do that. You got the failure of fulfillment ending. Yeah, principal, um, there's a grandpa in my soup. All right.